Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Paul here. It's Tuesday, 24th of July. It's the Admiral Markets Real Time Daily uh, Trading Ideas slot. Uh, unfortunately, I had a little bit of a technical issue this uh, this morning, but you know we adapt, we overcome, we find a solution. So I've uh, done this little recording for you here to to go through some of the uh, the trading ideas for today, Tuesday, uh, 24th of uh, July. As always, those of you who have uh, been joining us, it's about five days, five traders uh, going through their uh, particular daily trading ideas. As always, let's begin with a quick risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. They may not be suitable for everyone. Please ensure you fully understand all risks involved. Forex and CFD trading is a risky activity and this presentation and accompanying video should not be taken as advice for investing as they only represent the personal opinion of the authors. So, Five days, five traders. Today it's me, Paul Wallace. Tomorrow I'll be Giancarlo. But ten o'clock every long, uh, ten o'clock London time every every day. We have five traders giving five ideas, and you're very welcome to uh, to join us. In particular, we can also talk about uh, Admiral Markets. Admiral Markets provide a, a wide range of uh, instruments and products for you to trade. In particular, they're exceptionally competitive on uh, DAX 30, uh, running a particular promotion on that at the moment. I think for active traders, what is uh, really useful is the ability to, to have the MetaTrader Supreme Edition, especially on uh, MT4 and MT5. And if you have any questions about that, your account representative will be very, very happy to, uh, to guide you through that. Also, enormously important in the, uh, the UK, the uh, Admiral markets are regulated by the uh, Financial Conduct Authority. Many of you will be aware that uh, with the incoming ESMA rules, there will be new regulations that uh, Admiral Markets and all the brokers will be uh, running by from uh, sort of Monday the 30th of July. Uh, it's important that you make, a, make yourself aware of these. Uh, Admiral Markets will be running a series of webinars early next week, I think Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I commend that you uh, join them. It'll give you an opportunity to, to learn what those changes will be and what, if any, impact they may have upon yourself. With that in mind, you know, if you attend those webinars, you might be able to understand where you stand, whether you're being a particular retail client or whether you need to be sort of regraded as a professional client. Once again, if you speak to the uh, Admiral Markets account representative, they'll be very, very happy to talk you and guide you through those options. You can contact them on the the London number there, but also you know we have the uh, the YouTube channel which you'll see this video on, or also on Facebook, and also you can drop them an email at helloadmiralmarkets.com. So that's our intro. Okay, normally you have uh, Jens doing it much, much better than, than I do, but uh, my name's Paul Wallace, a professional trader. What we're going to do now is, if you'll bear with me, we'll uh, switch across to uh, some slides and some charts, and then we'll talk about what are our trading ideas for, uh, for today. So what uh, I thought I'd start with today, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, as a case of I appreciate that we have a, a broad spectrum of people who join me from people who are complete new beginners to people who are experienced uh, everyday traders. So I, I try to cover as much as I can to, to ensure that everybody can uh, sort of get some uh, value and insight. Uh, and just because of the day that we're on, Tuesday, July 24th, I just talk a little bit about uh, fundamentals. And, and the reason being is that this morning we had uh, Japan giving their PMI. We also had uh, um, uh, France. Germany and the Europe as a whole providing insight into their PMI and I appreciate for, for new traders sometimes they can get a little bit overwhelmed by trying to understand all of the fundamental data that comes out but you know if you were to sort of want one piece of data that you could easily understand as a new trader then I'd be saying you know direct your attention towards the PMI the purchasing managers index uh, effectively what it is is you know a, a survey amongst all of the sort of purchasing managers uh, with the cross sort of you know I think it's normally about three to four hundred major companies uh, and by that, they can start to get an idea of you know, how the economy is going in both the manufacturing and the services sector. It's a very, very simple uh, number to understand for, uh, for new traders. Effectively, any number above 50 it means that that particular sector, that particular economy is in an expansion phase. It's growing. Any number beneath 50 okay, is, shows that that particular sector and uh, economy is, is in a contraction. And uh, normally when you know, we have like sort of two quarters of contraction, then you know, we have a, a sort of an official definition of, of a recession. So uh, this morning we had a, you know, a, a broad spectrum coming across for, as I said, Japan, France, Germany and, and the Eurozone as a whole. Uh, it was broadly, broadly positive, broadly positive for, uh, for, the, uh, for the Eurozone. Okay? And then we'll have a little look at, well, how did that, uh, how did that play out in the markets? 
markets and did that provide us with a uh, did that provide us with an opportunity so let's switch across to the uh, mt4 uh, uh, supreme edition which i have here those of you who are completely new, okay, I have a profile set up for you know, all of the, the major indices, okay, for the, the major FX pairs and allows me to very quickly sort of have a, have a view on what's, uh, what's going on within those particular markets. So we've just looked at uh, PMI. So wh what did that, you know, the PMI, as I said, was broadly positive, broadly positive. So, you know, what sort of impact did that have upon the uh, markets? So here's, uh, here's the DAX, ladies and gentlemen. This is a four-hour chart here, what we've got. Um, once again, you know, uh, just using green bullish, red bearish candles, uh, a blue 20 simple moving average, a red 50 simple moving average, a green 200 simple moving average. You can see uh, fractals, which are the sort of the, the small little triangles above uh, particular uh, candles. And, you know, and just drawing in levels of support and resistance, particular areas of interest and, and particular patterns. So if we look at last week on the four hour chart, you know, we talked about, you know, I was talking about how, you know, sort of the DAX was coiling up there. Let's just put my cursor on my head. Yeah, the DAX coiling up there and, and pretty much later that day it, it, it blew out, it exploded out strong, move up. Uh, and then invariably it, uh, it fell back down, uh, probably mostly due to uh, Mr. Trump's comments at the end of last week, sort of, sort of just triggering more fears of trade wars. But if we have a look at it this week, and in particular this morning, let's uh, just go down to the 30-minute uh, chart here, maybe even go down to the 15-minute chart. We can see that, you know, this morning, you know, we were having a little bit of uh, just a you know, little bit of uh, you know volatility in terms of trading back and forth. But as news came out about the uh, the sort of the the eurozone uh, PMI being uh, broadly uh, broadly positive news, well, we can see what impact that had there on the DAX. Okay, you know, it really just uh, gave it a, a real shunt north. Okay, and that's where we saw you know saw a strong move from about twelve six hundred up to around about twelve seven forty. So you know, we've done a we've done one hundred forty ticks. You know, okay, in the in the sort of last hour or so, which is, you know, which is a great move if you were, uh, if you were long. But invariably, you know, what I'm interested in is, you know, what's happening now? What can we have a look at here? You know, I'm interested that price is now back up to this kind of area here where we, you know, we had selling last time. We had a, you know, a great deal of supply there. So, so what I'm going to be looking at here is if I go down to the sort of, you know, shorter term charts as we've got up here, I'm kind of interested that we have uh, railroad tracks and, uh, you know, what I'm going to be suggesting to you is that we just, uh, and it could be a broad theme for today. Today's session is about watch and shoot. All right, watch and shoot. Uh, you know, I think that I'll be interested to see after that uh, such a strong move. I'll be interested to see if we get some uh, particular profit taking. What I'd like to see is perhaps maybe another reversal pattern here, creating a, a one, two, three pattern there. In which case, then you know, I'll be looking to be sort of shorting around about the twelve seven twenty five to seven thirty area. Okay, if I get a if I get a good sort of secondary uh, reversal pattern, uh, and then sort of just triggering back down first targets towards around about that big round number 12700 we can see there was some wicks there last time so you know that's just a case of watch and shoot on that particular uh, trade ladies uh, and gentlemen you know we've had a great move up just off the back of that pmi news but you know let's see you know there'll be some people wanting to take profits there's always somebody somewhere wanting to take profits uh, and then we can sort of see how we can use that for our uh, for our own uh, set up our own little reversal trade so <clears throat> that was the uh, the dax Let's uh, have a look at the uh, the big uh, FX pairs, okay? Well, that's uh, you know that's what a lot of our traders uh, like to, to focus on. Um, as always, okay, as always, you know, if you're going to be trading FX, we need to sort of have a look at what is the uh, what is the dollar index doing because it sort of drives the uh, drives the whole drives the whole game. It's the big gorilla that we uh, that you know you want to uh, you want to be friends with rather than fighting with. So uh, you've heard me talk about in the last sessions about how on this on the weekly chart I thought we might get a little bit of a drop back down here towards the 92 area. So a 92 area, okay, that just gave us like a what I mean, gave us a right shoulder, an inverse head and shoulders, and after the summer, then maybe we might see you know a continued dollar strength. But you know what, what's happened in the last couple of days to maybe sort of just uh, take a little bit of uh, take a little bit of heat out of that is you know is that you know we had a little bit of a Trump comment there, a sort of I think it was kind of uh, sort of you know Friday morning time, Thursday evening, Friday morning time. This is now the daily uh, the daily chart of the dollar index. You know, a 95 has provided some uh, great resistance there, and on sort of uh, here we had on um, kind of uh, uh, into um, uh, into sort of uh, Thursday. You know, we had we had a real strong push up above that 95 level, all right? But we couldn't get up, we couldn't get hold above it, all right? And here's a little commentary for traders. You know, if, if it's attacking a level and it can't hold above it. Well, then you know, I was uh, I was running a trading event that day and sort of said, well, if we can't get above it, you know, the next move is down. 
And then actually what we had was, you know, the sort of the very next day, Mr. Trump comes out, says a comment how he doesn't want strong dollar. And, what, you know, what, hey, presto, what happens is the dollar sort of rolls away. And that's where uh, that's where we are at, uh, at the moment. I think that I see that, you know, the 50 period moving average in the daily has acted as some sort of uh, strong support. I see that as a little bit of a sort of a little bit of a wedge, a little bit of a channel that's that's building. We've got sort of 95 above the sort of uh, the daily 50 beneath. And I just think of that as maybe a little bit of a squeeze starting to happen. OK, a little bit of a little bit of a coiling up. OK, to, you know, as traders start to look to maybe take profits before they all clear off on their uh, on their holidays. So, you know, we're, with that in mind, we look at, well, you know, how does that uh, how does that, uh, you know, play out for, for other trade opportunities for us. So let's switch to uh, euro dollar. OK, as I said, there's a little bit of uh, the sort of theme is kind of watch and shoot. All right. In that sense, just watch and shoot. And here we have, you know, those of you completely new. All right. Dollar index is made up of around about 57 percent by the euro. So there's a real good, strong inverse correlation. Here's the uh, the daily chart on the euro dollar. OK, and we can see that it's actually, you know, it's coiling up there into a nice triangle. OK, we, you know, we had a, a really nice couple of moves within that. What interests me uh, further when I look at the euro dollar is that if I go down to the four hour chart, here we go, I'm down onto the four hour chart here, is that what I'm looking at is, you know, we can see that, you know, we see those trend lines underneath supporting as price coils up. But, but at this particular moment, all right, this morning, what I'm kind of curious and interested in is, you know, we have we have the moving averages mostly flat all together along with price. Right. And what does that mean? Uh, you know, I, I talk about this is like uh, this is, you know, when, when you take two magnets and uh, you know, opposite poles, all right, they, they attract and they, they will stick together. When you take two uh, magnets that have you know, the same poles and what happens is you try to push them together, then they, they force themselves apart. Uh, and in trading, I, I see that in the same idea here. When, when all of the moving averages and price are in the same place together, that's when I normally just about to get a, a little bit of a, a a little bit of a move. OK, you know, it's like they're like you know, the magnets of the, the magnets of the two North Poles trying to be pushed together. They just repel each other and push each other away. And, and I think that that's where we are at the moment. I think that's, you know, we're there at the moment and we're going to see that, you know, those be repelled and pushed away. So I'd be saying just just watch and shoot on that. OK, just watch and shoot. You know, we can it wouldn't surprise me on an intraday basis. For price to sort of you know rally up and re retest this area around 1730, okay, 1730, the top of the trend line, but also you know it may sort of roll down and, and sort of test the sort of the shorter the the south side of it around about 116. So just uh, keep an eye as this sort of as this coil begins to build. So let's have a little look at some other uh, uh, other currencies, okay, for us. Uh, let's have a look at uh, I want to have a look at dollar yen. So why don't we have a little look at the uh, the sort of uh, the dollar charts, okay? As always, I said at the start, I have a little profile there with uh, one for every uh, every particular uh, the major currencies, okay? So I'm able to this is the dollar, so I'm able to just very quickly get a a quick view of you know what's going on within that particular pair, and I'm and I'm quite interested in uh, dollar yen. Dollar yen's been uh, you know it's been a little bit interesting, a little bit volatile, and. Uh, Whilst you know we had this big, I was looking at this bigger weekly chart, okay, bigger weekly triangle. You know, it's really it's it's you know it's it's flattered to deceive, okay. You know what we had here was we had a bit of a false breakout of it to the south side, which would have dragged in a lot of shorts, and then what do you know? We pushed all the way to the other side, uh, and it's looking a little bit like we've had a little bit of a false breakout there at the moment, but but. But we might be a little bit early to that. We might be a little bit early. So what I'm kind of interested in is, you know, as I, as I go down to, uh, you know, as I go down to the sort of, uh, you know, through the charts, you know, yes, we had a breakout. And it's a case of, you know, are we are we back at this level? This this treble one level, OK, has been a kind of an interesting level for a good while. And that's where I uh, that's where I see is there at the moment. If I go down through the charts, OK, in a four hour, well, you know, I, I see, you know, we're just getting a little bit, a little bit squeezed there. OK, 200, you know, 200 there, uh, four hour, 200, you know, beneath with uh, treble one level. OK, price has just been uh, trying to push up, but unable to, you know, and I see that that big trend line, the weekly trend line has acted as a bit of resistance there. And I see us, you know, just we're almost like, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of, a, a, you know, a coil up happening there. And I, you know, and I think here we go into 15 minute charts as this trade's happening. I think we're just breaking out of that south trend line and it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, just to sort of see us move down to that treble one level. So I've been watching shooting this in case of, you know, you know, I wouldn't be short here because I think treble one might act as sort of significant support again. But what I would maybe like to see is perhaps price bounce off 111, maybe put in a, a lower high. And then as it started to move down again, that might provide me with a, an opportunity for for uh, for today.
So there we go on dollar yen. Uh, let's have a look at uh, you know sort of pound yen. I wanted to have a little look at. Okay, I'm particularly interested in that at the moment, and uh, we'll we'll sort of look at that to <coughs> to, to sort of uh, to finish up. What we uh, here we go is my uh, is my sterling profile. Sterling has been a uh, sterling you know is a little bit you know a little bit uh, challenging to to use uh, to use um, sort of the uh, the present geopolitical comments. Okay, uh, sort of trading sterling has been a little bit like trying to you know you know pull a lion by its tail simply because of uh, all the political shenanigans going on in the UK. You know when there's a little a little bit of trouble, a little bit of a flip or a flop, then invariably you know the uh, the market shifts and moves very very um, quickly. But what I was particularly uh, interested in this morning was, you know, the pound against the yen. And, you know, we've been looking, we've been in a lovely downtrend there. You can see that for the moment as we've had that sort of yen strength, sterling weakness. But, uh, you know, what I was intrigued in this morning was a case of, you know, we had a, we had a real bit of a flat level there around about 145.70. This morning overnight, we sort of had a little bit of a, you know, push down beneath it. But actually, it came back up above it. So, you know, it looked like a false breakout. We had another attempt at it, and actually, you know, very quickly that turned around here. And, and you know, now we have a, now we've got a bit of a one, two, three formation here. Okay, the the point three is also quite a strong bullish candle. So, you know, I'm thinking that if if we can't get down there and break beneath it and hold beneath it, well, then actually, you know, I'm going to be looking to sort of maybe take a little bit of a a, a longer trade onto the long side on that again on that engulfing candle. So, you know, looking there at around about long, around about one. 145.74 stops around about 145.50 so you're looking around about 24 pips of trade risk uh, and just you know as usual sort of just sort of uh, uh, targeting these kind of recent highs here around about the the 146.60 so that's you know that becomes around about sort of about 85 86 pips of profit which gives us a reward to risk of around about three and a half to one those of you who have been following me for a while will know I like to sort of trade asymmetric reward to risk ratio Shows. If I'm going to risk 100 euros, I want to make two, three, 400 euros. That's the way I particularly like to like to trade. So uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Just a quick flick through some of the uh, some of the majors that we can uh, have a look at over the next day or two. As I said, there's a few opportunities there to watch and shoot. Uh, as always, I, you know, I apologise that we had a little bit of technical uh, issue there this morning. That uh, with the best will in the world, sometimes we have to we have to uh, grapple with that. Um, as I said, the uh, admiral markets are going to be providing webinars early next week on uh, with regards to the sort of ESMA regulation I commend that you uh, you watch those just to sort of get a, a grasp on what might actually be coming down the line and how you can prepare yourself for that and, and as always uh, you know I wish you the very best of success in your own trading ladies and gentlemen and I look forward to seeing you uh, next Tuesday for uh, for the next real time uh, daily trading ideas session with myself Paul Wallace trade well and have a great day